To get started, we're just going to go to vids.new. That's going to open a new Google Vids project. Now, the first thing we see is this screen here where we've got different options for creating a new Google Vid. First, if you have a Gemini license, we can prompt Gemini to create a video outline for us, including a script. We've also got templates, and there are quite a lot here to choose from. If you click on one of these templates, you can then see all of the different scenes inside of it and choose what you want to include. Or I can record a video from scratch, or I can upload something that I've got. Now, I'm not actually going to choose any of those for this tutorial. We're going to close this window here and instead just start with a blank screen like this. Now, let's quickly orient ourselves with what's on screen here. At the top, we have the menu bar. This is where we're going to be able to do things that are contextual to what we have selected on the screen. On the right, we have the side panel where we'll be able to select things to put in our video. On the bottom, we have the timeline where we're going to be able to edit scenes for our video. And in the middle, this is called our canvas. And I'll refer to all of those different parts of Google Vids throughout this tutorial today. Google Vids are saved in Google Drive, just like Google Docs or Sheets or Slides. So the first thing I'm going to do is click up where it says Untitled Video to give this file a name. I'm going to call mine London because we're going to make a video today about visiting London. So in our first scene here, I want to insert a video of London. So on the right hand side, on the side panel, I'm going to choose this stock and web option. If I click here, you can see that I've got lots of different things to choose from, from videos to stock images, music, stickers, sound effects, and GIFs, as well as the usual Google image search. Now, I specifically want to search for a video here. In the search bar here, I'm going to type in London. And we can see I get a few videos. If I want to preview any of them, I can click the I icon here, and that video is going to play. And if I like it, I can insert it by clicking the button at the top. Now, I could also just have clicked and dragged from the side panel onto the canvas. Now, I want this video to take up the whole screen in this scene. So I'm going to right click on it and choose Expand Video to fill the scene. I want to include a title on this first scene. So in the side panel, this time I'm going to click on the text option here. Now, in here, there are a lot of pre made items as well. So I could go and look at all the different headlines, for example, and I can just drag these on and edit the text. But I'm going to keep things simple for the sake of this tutorial and just click on Add a Title at the top here. Now I'm going to type my title, which is Visit London. And I'm going to highlight all of this text and then change the text color on the menu bar here to white. The menu bar is just like it would be in Slides or in Google Docs. So if you're familiar with any other tool like that, this is going to be really easy to use. I'm also going to make this bold and I'm going to center the text in the text box here as well. I'm going to move this down a little bit to make sure it's on a darker background at the bottom here. And that's it. I've created my first scene, the opening to my video. Now, one thing is, because I inserted that stock video, it was 16 seconds long. So it's actually increased the length of that scene in my video. So down in the timeline here, I can click on the right handle of this scene and just drag it along until I get to the time that I want. Uh, I'm going to go for four seconds here. And if I want to see what my video looks like at any point, I can just click the play button here. Time to add our second scene then. And to do that, down on the timeline here, we're going to click on this plus button to add a new scene. And this time, rather than add a video straight away, I'm actually going to choose shapes and lines over on the side panel here. You can see there's a lot of shapes I could choose from. I'm just going to choose the rounded rectangle and I can either click or click and drag. So when I click, it puts the box in here. I'm going to drag this out to become a rectangle and I'm double clicking in the shape and typing Big Ben. Again, I'm going to highlight this text, going to make it bold. I'm going to increase the size a little bit and I'm going to change the text color to white because I want to change the background color of this shape to this blue color and I'm going to make the line color transparent. I'm going to move this up into the top left corner. Now on this slide, I want a few facts about Big Ben. So I'm going to go back to my text option on the side panel here. And this time I'm going to choose add body text. I've just got a few facts about London that I'm going to add here. So I've got the first one, I'm going to just resize the text box, move it over to the left here. Now I'm going to copy this text box by doing Control and C or Command and C on a Mac, and then Control and V or Command and V on a Mac, paste it like this. I like doing it this way because it means the text box and the text and everything is all the same size, ready to go for the next one. And the same again. All right, and there's my three facts.
Now I'm going to add one more object to this slide, which is going to be a stock video. So let's go back to stock and web on my side panel. And this time I'm going to search for Big Ben. I like the look of this video here, so I'm going to click to insert it. Now I don't want this video to be the whole size of the canvas this time. So I'm just going to move it up to this top corner. I am going to click and drag like this to size it full size right now, but I want to crop the sky out on the left. So up in the menu bar, I can click on the crop icon here and then just drag one of these crop handles like this. So it's roughly there and I can just click away once I'm done. And now that video is cropped like last time because I've added this stock video. It's increased the length of the scene. So I'm going to click and drag on the right hand handle again to make this shorter. We're going to make this one. I think we'll go for five seconds. Now, if I preview this, the video plays, but everything else looks a bit static. So I want to make it more dynamic by adding animations to the text that's on the scene here as well. The way I do that is just to select any object on the canvas. So I'm going to click on the Big Ben title we've got here. Then I click the animation button that comes up here and I can see all of the different animations that I can choose from in the side panel over here. And if I mouse over them, it'll show me what they look like as a preview on the canvas. I'm just going to choose this simple slide option. We get some other options here, like being able to change the duration and the direction it comes in and how it's animated as well. I'm going to leave all those as they are for now. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that by default, Google vids will add this same animation, both when the object enters the screen and for the end of the scene, it will leave the screen. Now, if I only want it to come in at the beginning, for example, but just stay on there the whole length of the rest of the scene, I need to choose to add separate enter and exit animations at the bottom here. Now, at the top, I can switch to the exit tab here and you see it says none. So if I drag the playhead on my timeline here to the beginning and I play this scene, there's what the animation looks like. And at the end of this scene, it just remains on screen. Now let's add animations for all the other things as well. You can do this by selecting multiple objects at the same time too. So I'm going to click on one text box. I'm going to hold the shift button on my keyboard and click on the second one and the third one. And on the animation side panel over here, I'm going to choose, I think for this, we'll just go for a simple fade. I don't want the fade to happen with every letter fading in like that though. Instead, I'm going to change this to whole like so. And if I play from the beginning here, there's what that looks like. Again, at the moment, that animation is also playing at the end of the scene. So I'm going to go to the bottom here, choose separate enter and exit animations, and then change the exit animation up here. Make sure that's none. And it's not just text or shapes that I can animate. I can animate any object on the screen. So I'm also going to choose the Big Ben video here and again, choose slide. But this time I'm going to change the direction so it comes from the other side. Again, choose separate enter and exit animations. That way it will stay on the slide at the end. So let's see what our whole video looks like so far. In the timeline, I'm going to drag the playhead right the way to the beginning and click the preview button. I've got my first scene here with the text and this nice video in the background. And then it goes to the second scene where those animations happen. And then it's the end of that scene there. Now at the moment, all of those animations are happening at exactly the same time. I think it's a bit too much to take in. So I want to stagger how the animations start on my scene. The way that I'm going to do that is click this button here on the timeline that says show timing. And you see now underneath my scene, it shows me an individual track for each object that I have on the canvas. So if I want each of these bullet points to come in one after the other, I can change the timing of each of these like this. I'm just clicking and dragging the handles just like I do with the scenes in the timeline. Now when I play, we can see that each one comes up one after the other. In fact, I'm going to make this slightly shorter here because I want the first one to come in a bit after the title as well. So let's have a look again. Perfect. I think that's much better. Let's add one final scene for this tutorial. So again, on my timeline at the bottom here, I'm going to click on the plus button to add a new scene. And this time I want to write myself a script of what I'm going to say because I'm going to record myself for this scene. So on the side panel, you see there's a button here for scripts. Let's click on that. And in this box, I can add a script. So I'm going to paste in something that I wrote earlier. Now, I don't want to record this script just as a voiceover. I want to record myself on camera. So I'm going to choose the recording option on the side panel here and choose camera. And it's going to take me to the recording studio here 
And you can see, because I have a script, it's given me that script almost like a teleprompter over my video here so I can read it whilst I record. So to record, all I need to do is press the big record button at the bottom of the screen and then read my script. Did you know London is a global hub hosting over 8 million residents who speak over 300 languages, making it one of the most diverse cities on earth? And then click the record button again to stop. And that's my video. I can preview the video by clicking preview and playing it back. Did you know? I'm happy with that. So then I click the insert button here and it's inserted that video for me into this scene. Now there are more options for things like voiceovers that are generated by AI. So stay tuned for my more advanced tutorial to find out more about those. Next, let's talk about transitions between scenes in our timeline. So we can see between each scene, there is a button to add a transition. And a transition is just an effect to go from one scene to the other. So we could just choose a simple transition like dissolve, for example. Now let's move the playhead back here and preview this. I think it's good, but it's a little bit slow. So I go back to the transition again, and I can change the duration to make it a bit quicker. I'm going to make it 0. point six seconds. And I'm going to do the same for the next transition as well. Choose dissolve and again change it to 0 0.6 seconds. Personally, I don't like fancy transitions, but you choose whatever floats your boat. Now, I always think great videos like this will have a bit of music underneath them. So the last thing I'm going to do is go back to my stock media button on the side panel here. And this time I'm going to clear the search and just search for music. And I want something, I think, kind of happy. So I'm just gonna search for the word happy and I can preview these different pieces of music here. Okay, I think this one will do. And I can just press the plus button here to insert the audio. Now we can see when it's inserted it, it's put it where my playhead was here. So I can just click and drag across on the timeline here. And now that music is going to be underneath the video. Now it's probably going to be too loud for my liking. So I'm going to click on the sound button here and that allows me to make some changes here. So I might change this to say 70% volume. So let's play the whole thing before we look at the options for downloading and sharing. Alright, I think that's looking good. So the last thing that you're probably going to want to do is share this with other people or download it to save it to your computer. Google Vids is collaborative just like Google Docs and Sheets and Slides and the other apps as well. That means I can go up to the share button here and I could type other people's names to share with them. And I can give them edit, comment or view access to this so we can actually collaborate on editing the video together too. If you are collaborating, you might find it helpful to leave comments on each scene or on different parts of the scene. So if you select an object in a scene, like the title here for example, you can choose to add a comment using this button here and type something that you want your collaborator to see. Now it's likely that you want to use this video on a TV screen somewhere, so you probably need the video file. To get that, we go to the file menu on the top left of the screen here and we can either download this video as an MP4, which is a standard video format, or we can export it to Google Drive to share from there. And that is a quick overview of Google Vids. If you have any questions or you want to know more, drop a note in the comments and keep an eye out for another video coming soon where we'll touch on some more of the advanced features in Google Vids using Gemini to create videos and AI voiceovers as well. I'll see you in the next one.